little skill, but this game's idea of skill is just throwing the kitchen sink at you and telling you to deal with it. Make most of these bosses next to impossible, and then they take away the one thing that would actually help you in these situations. The game relies on you grinding. Does that sound like fun? No! Alright, you bastards, why'd you bring me here? We are the Legion of Twat Balls, and we're here to make you suffer. Let me guess, you're gonna force me to play a terrible game hoping I lose my sanity by the end? H how'd you know? Well, I've played this little song and dance before, and it all smacks of terrible writing and forced cringeworthy overarching stories where there doesn't need to be one. Okay, that's just a- And I suggest you knock it off before the viewers turn off this game review because of the cliched premise that everyone hates. Okay, that's it. You're no fun. Yeah, I know. A few moments later... Mega Man 8 fucking sucks. Ah yes, Mega Man 8, otherwise known as the Unknown Quantity. You see, before now I'd never actually played Mega Man 8, I was only aware of its reputation, but even that's not 100% solid because the Mega Bullies as a collective can't seem to decide whether or not Mega Man 8 is good. There's no clear consensus, but here's the thing, I'll be the first to admit that I'm not the best Mega Man player because I've never really played them until recent years, but now I've played and beaten all 12 mainline classic Mega Man games except except for one. Take a guess which one. That's right, I couldn't be asked to finish Mega Man 8 because it so thoroughly pissed the fucking shit out of me! I am trying so hard not to make this a rant view, but Jesus fucking Christ in heaven, this game is making it really hard for me. Sad thing is, Mega Man 8 had so much potential. I'm gonna go on record here as saying this is easily the best looking classic Mega Man game. This being the only classic Mega Man game on the PS1, it required a bit of a graphical overhaul, and Mega Man's slightly dorky design aside even more so than before, I think they really succeeded. The pixel art is second to none when taking the designs of all these characters into account. The environment design is superb with layered and detailed backgrounds unlike anything we've seen before, and most of the animation is smooth as butter which I'll admit is a phrase I've never really understood. In what way is butter smooth? But the fluidity of the animations is top freaking notch, and that's on everything right down to the most minor of minor enemies. It's just so smooth and fluid, it's just... Oh god! Why couldn't the rest of the game be this good? The sprite work is amazing, the environments, the user interface, everything is just so gorgeous in this game, even the most innocuous things. But while I'm about to go on a tirade, even the graphics can pose an issue, because sometimes the foreground and background can get so busy with random BS that it'll be impossible to tell what's an enemy and what's just a foreground object, which can cause some issues of clarity, leading to damage being dealt to you. That said, I'll even go as far as to say that these anime cutscenes are really well animated. Granted, I don't really have the greatest point of comparison because I can't fucking stand anime in most cases, but still. Of course the horrible voice act is a song and dance I've seen mentioned one too many times, but at least the animation's nice, but this serves a precedent for the game that cannot be underplayed. This does not in any way, shape, or form scream Mega Man. I remember watching the opening cutscene, you know, this one, and thinking, what the hell is going on? It felt like I'd popped in the wrong game for a good one and a half to two minutes. It's not really a knock on the game per se, but if that's how the game feels as it opens, then we're in for a rough ride. And let me just tell you, it doesn't get better. Whenever these cutscenes were happening, sometimes between levels, I was completely lost as to what was going on, and not just because of the absolutely atrocious voice acting. So this game is a treat visually for the most part, but not in all aspects, and the music with the power of the PS1 is pretty superb. And beyond that, with pretty much everything else, they don't so much strike out as much as they simultaneously strike out while having the bat slip out of the batter's hands, fly 30 feet, and impale the coach. That's how much this game fails. So first of all, I should mention the story. It's as hacked out as it could have possibly been. They overdid the no shit plot twist, they introduced an edgy counterpart to Mega Man, and from there Mega Man 8 proceeds to do absolutely nothing out of the ordinary. Okay, so there's a bit of an intrigue with these guys who fall from space and this weird purple orb that Dr. Wily steals, but nothing that can prevent us from Dr. Wily forcing us to go through 8 levels to take out Robot Master and finally Dr. Wily himself, who once again just hovers there, making no effort to escape in a hurry. We could have just easily shot him and ended the whole game here if we had control. That is a cliche I really hate. He's just sitting there. He's just, he's just sitting there. Make like an American police officer and shoot him before he can do anything wrong! 
Capcom really likes doing that, having a villain in a position that we could have easily stopped them, but then they just get away. Resident Evil is especially guilty for that. I'm sure Base will make a comeback towards the finale to get revenge on us for making him look like a chump in the opening cutscene. I wouldn't know I didn't get that far because this game's terrible, and to say otherwise would be moronic. I'm kind of being ironic. Let's get to the nitty gritty, the gameplay. Pretty much every way a game could be fun, Mega Man 8 fucks up. First of all, the controls are awful. The jumping feels like it's delayed by about a fifth of a second, so it feels like I have to press the jump earlier than I do, leading to some unfair deaths. I should mention that I'm playing this on the Legacy Collection 2, otherwise known as Mega Man's Hall of Shame, and for some reason doesn't include and base. None of the other games in this collection have this issue, so I have no choice but to conclude that this is an issue unique to this game. They fucked up the jumping in a Mega Man game. How do you screw that up? That's like screwing up boiled water. Th that's literally half the game. Surprisingly, the sprites are proportionally smaller than Mega Man 7, so you don't quite feel as heavy, but Mega Man himself seems to be tilted on the Z-axis slightly, so it's a bit harder to tell what your maximum jumping distance is. Those are some small potatoes, though. This game could control like God, and it would still be horribly unfun to play. This game not controlling well is only the connecting thread that takes everything down a notch. These games were always inherently fun to play right down to the controls, but now with the game feeling slightly janky, what was fun is now arduous, and what was obnoxious is even worse. So you try to jump and shoot your way through a series of levels, taking out enemies with various weapons, and getting through platforming challenges galore. There's a number of mechanics you can use to do this. Your goal is to get through every level and eventually face the boss in that level. Then you beat them and get some approximation of their power. In theory, basic Mega Man action. I'm gonna say first off that this game is way too long. Yes, yes, bang for your buck and all that, but the Mega Man formula is so simple that the slightest turn of the heel can turn this game from a good length to too long. There's only so much you can do with the formula like this. Some of these levels are a decent length if you know what you're doing, usually because there's a gimmick that pads it out, but oftentimes the levels just go on and on and on to the point that I question when they're gonna get to the point. They actually have gated off sections of levels that have their own loading screen and continue points after a game over, which is a nice gesture because I'd rather that than do these levels from the start, but when the individual levels require a bypass to the traditional game over system, then maybe consider cutting the fat a bit. This is the first and only game in the entire series that I had to play in three sessions, and one of those after only the first level because I was so dumbfounded by what I was seeing that I had to stop playing for a while. Firstly, because the gameplay was akin to a botched lobotomy, and Second, for what it is, it's one of the most padded games I've ever played, and let me just tell you, the level design is kinda awful, and it's a very distinct kinda awful that's hard to really quantify. Now, there are some neat ideas here and there, like with the background bell that gets rung and whatever type of box you're standing on will have some effect on you, but oftentimes the level design will be working against you. For example, the wind current is fine, platforms that raise and lower with seemingly little pattern is fine, and an abundance of enemies coming at you from every single angle is fine, but having these all together is really frustrating. How about the disappearing platforms that constantly disappear too quick for me to get where I need to go. Sometimes the difficulty of just doing the simplest things is through the roof. Just jumping from place to place can be frustrating because they're constantly throwing shit in your way that you don't have the means to deal with. In fact, this game has a fetish for throwing things at you that you couldn't have possibly been prepared for, like in Clown Man stage where you have these trains where you have to jump on the back but not on the front because the front damages you for some reason. Then the game will throw legions of enemies your way too fast for you to possibly be able to fight. Sometimes there'll just be other trains that crash into you once again way too fast for you to ever be able to catch it, or how about the aforementioned section in another one of the first levels in Tengu Man stage, where they just throw 20 mets at you at once on top of the regular enemies already in the stage, and the gimmick of this level being the wind carrying me. There's just too much here to deal with without taking some damage. Earlier games may have been fairly basic in their design, but they very rarely if ever threw so much at you that you couldn't at least in theory deal with something that was thrown at you without taking damage. All you needed was a little skill, but this game's idea of skill is just throwing the kitchen sink at you and telling you to deal with it. Like, this is ROM hack levels of bad game design. That- that's subpar Mario Maker levels of bad game design. No creativity, just throw a million of something at you and let you sort out the details. This wasn't even just in the gimmicky areas. The entire aforementioned first area of Astro Man stage is designed for you to basically be forced into situations where you can't fight back because the only way to traverse some of this level is to use platforms that disappear but only appear just long enough for you to barely be able to get where you need to go, but it doesn't wait long enough for you to be able to move with any grace or carefulness. You're always moving in a rushed panic. And what do you have to contend with while you're doing this? Enemies that you can't hit, enemies that are invincible, flying enemies that appear too fast in too large numbers to properly deal with, basically the end result is that everything is specifically designed to get in your way in the most inconvenient of ways. You're having to fight things, but you don't have long enough to fight them because you need to get to the next area otherwise the platform will disappear. You know what's sad though, the only parts of these levels that I actually remember are the really excruciating bits because when I try and remember the parts of the level design that would be considered normal, it's so bloody generic. I try to remember specific instances and basically keep drawing a blank. 
I can't even remember most of the gimmicky levels because most of the gimmicks don't even change the gameplay in any way, but rather change how you progress through the level. There's a level that's a series of mazes, so all that does is make you have to keep going back on yourself. The most memorable aspect of this level is the fact that there is a maze rather than the content of the maze itself. The same goes for the water stage. I remember a significant portion of the level is underwater and dealt with spiky balls and water currents and whatnot, but there's not one moment I can honestly say was the defining moment, or how about, I don't know, Tengu Man stage? I remember the gimmick, I remember the air current, I remember the enemies that dropped from the sky, but nothing about the level design was memorable. It's all just kind of white noise. I'm hard pressed to summon a single moment in this game where the level design that wasn't terrible was interesting or fun enough to stick with me. But when I think back to almost every other game, I can remember a whole bunch of great moments and set pieces that were fun, well implemented, and switched up the gameplay with varying degrees of subtlety. The disappearing floating face, the upside down river, the miles of ladders, and so on and so forth. So with that evidence, I can only conclude that when Mega Man 8 isn't teeth grindingly bad, it's painfully generic combat platforming. But when this game is bad, it's terrible, and nowhere do I think this is exemplified more than in the bosses. The bosses, and let me be frank here, are excruciating. I could come up with a more clever way to put that, but this game doesn't deserve that. So this time around, we have Tengu Man, Frost Man, Clown Man, Grenade Man, Sword Man, Search Man, Astro Man, and Aquaman. Hey, DC Comics, could you technically sue something out of existence retroactively? Cause boy do I have a target for you. Speaking of Aquaman, he's easily the worst boss in the game. He has only three attacks, and two of them are fairly easy to avoid if you can catch onto the vocal cues that give away what each attack is going to be, but this one that is just a stream of water that splits off is the absolute worst. You know, the measure of a good attack is being able to avoid it fairly while still having it be hard to avoid. But you know what I love? Attacks that only have a small point where you can avoid it, but then have no indication of where that point is going to be until you have a split second to get there, or otherwise you're damaged. And sometimes you don't even have the point of safety, so unless you're able to jump with perfect timing to stay in the air while the attack is there, it's basically an unavoidable attack. Combine that with his not quite as hard to avoid but still obnoxious attacks and his ear gratingly effeminate voice. Finally it's my turn! I'm Aquaman! And you have what is the single worst boss fight of any of the robot masters in the entire series. Possibly just the worst boss fight period. Another dreadful one is the confusingly named Tengu Man. Now, I have no idea what the fuck a Tengu is, but it kind of sounds like Pingu. His gimmick is that he's yet another wind-based robot, and his main attacks are disappearing to a place you can't reach, or hitting you with an air attack that carries you away, often right over the edge without any way to recover. The boss wouldn't be so hard in theory if I weren't taken over the edge beyond my control every time I try to do anything. It's not that this attack is hard to avoid avoid in theory, but it's usually combined with another attack, so while you're busy dealing with one attack, attack 2 is bending you over and you can fill in the rest. If you don't dodge, it almost instantly will rise up, thereby making it harder to dodge. Sometimes it will be too high to jump over and too low to slide under. Then his other attacks have the issue of often coming from off screen, and by the time you notice, it's too late. And this is on the Legacy Collection 2, which has more checkpoints including right before the boss. If I were subjected to these boss fights that can kill you with little to no input from you and had to redo a significant portion of the level, I wouldn't have even bothered finishing one level, let alone as many as I did. How about Swordman, who's basically invincible for 90% of the fight and has several attacks that have awkward heights and are too high to jump over and too low to duck under? Some other bosses are fairly mediocre but otherwise acceptable, however the universal problem with all these bosses in Mega Man 8 is that they're all bullet sponges. It's the opposite end of the spectrum to Mega Man 2. Even with the proper weakness, almost every single boss takes a million hits which makes these fights tedious on top of arduous. And you know what I really can't fucking stand? So they make most of these bosses next to impossible and then they take away the one thing that would actually help you in these situations. Situations. You know what I'm talking about, right? They got rid of the goddamned E-Tanks. What? Why? Why, on God's green earth, would anybody think the one universal safety blanket in the series should be taken away in the hardest and most unfair game to date? That is 50 shades of AIDS! So basically, either you do all these bosses on one health bar, or you can get fucked. Seriously, was all of Capcom on crazy pills when they were making this game? For God's sake! Maybe I wouldn't need the E-Tanks if I was better at this game, but it's a poorly designed game anyway, so being good at this game is like being good at playing Rochambeau. Sure, you could probably learn the intricacies of kicking another man in the junk, but you still have to take the kicks to the nuts, so why are you even playing this voluntarily? I'm not the greatest Mega Man player, lest we forget. I'm sure y'all beat this game when you were still in the womb, back when you had no life, but I'm still mostly unfamiliar with Mega Man as a franchise, and I'm also an adult with a bullshit threshold. So I don't care how easy this game is for you, or how old you were when you first beat it, because that doesn't matter. Sad thing is, none of the weapons you can get from these bosses are even that useful. There's the Flash Bomb, which is kinda useful because it does constant damage, and so does the Tornado Hold, assuming you can hit the thing you're trying to aim for, but everything else is not useful enough to pry me away from my trusty charged Mega Buster, and even that's not as powerful as it used to be. I'm pretty sure a full charge does like half the proportion 
proportional damage that it used to, but if you thought the bosses were bad, the mini bosses are even worse. I thought there was a severe issue with the difficulty because many of these mini bosses were as hard and sometimes harder than the bosses they were fighting for. Some of them have a problem with throwing way too much at you, while others take way too many hits, and it's not like it's obvious what the weaknesses were. <laughs> You know how I mentioned that these games could be hard at explaining things to the point that you wouldn't know something unless you happen to stumble across it or worst case scenario look it up? Some may like the fact that there are obtuse aspects of this game, but I think that if you can defend this, then I think it's my civic duty to put chlorine in your gene pool. The absolute worst part for not explaining things is in Swordman stage. It's split into four gauntlets, and all things considered, it's probably one of the easier levels, but there's this one section where you need to get past these spiked pillars that kill you in one hit, but then you come across this one part with a gap too large to jump. I died a few times trying several things, until I realized you're supposed to use Thunderclaw to swing across. This was never made clear and is rarely a mandatory mechanic after this. How am I supposed to know that? The only way that you could possibly know this is that this level is part of the second set of levels that unlock after the first set of levels, so they could have things that relied on the first set of level powers, but how am I supposed to guess that this thing that looks like a background element is a mandatory item? Mega Man 7 had similar things, but you know what Mega Man 7 had? A brief demonstration of how to use each power, but what we end up with here is a poorly animated claymation style… thing. I'm lucky I had the internet to tell me, but then you had things like Search Man Stage, which had these doors that you could only briefly open by shooting them. A decently established mechanic, but then you need to shoot open this door and swing with the Thunderclaw into the doorway all in one motion, which would be fine if it weren't for the instant death pit that awaits you if you fall. This is the entire game. Things that will just kill you if you don't get it right away. Seriously, why do we even have a health bar when everything in this game is designed to take you out in one hit? So the Thunderclaw is the prime example of things being unexplained, but it's by no means the only example. Like, for example, remember that thing I praised with the bells that ring in the background? Well, the element that you need to pay attention to, which is the main indicator of this gimmick, is tiny in the background and is often covered by the scenery. And these backgrounds are so busy, I thought it was just another piece of the background for ages, so I had no idea what the indication for this was until I happened to put two and two together several minutes and several mistakes later, and all of these items you can use from the pause menu are complete mysteries until you use them. And you know what I hate about these items? They're all or nothing. You can't just activate them and deactivate them once the screen is cleared. Either I'm thick as concrete or there's no way to stop using these items once you do. I couldn't for the life of me figure out if there's a way to stop Rush from using bombs or whatnot. The usefulness of the buyable items are complete mysteries and not even slightly based on price. I thought it would be useful to be able to shoot five pellets at once instead of the standard three, but I don't think there was ever a point where I could fire five pellets in a short enough time to take advantage of it, but then the arrow shot absolutely wrecks shit, but none of it helps with the gimmicky sections. In Tengu Man stage, there's a section that turns into what amounts to a horizontal shooter. You scroll slow as hell, and it's honestly really boring and completely arbitrary from what was thus established. You just scroll and shoot while hoping not to get worn down by the end or fall asleep through sheer boredom. But the absolute creme de la creme of terrible design would be this snowboarding section. Seemingly, the entire development team had a collective stroke and decided it would be a great idea to step away from the standard gameplay in favor of what amounts to a forced runner section where every Everything kills you, and I mean everything. If you don't jump with perfect timing and land with perfect accuracy, you'll die. If you don't slide with the perfect timing, you'll die. If you jump early, you die. If you jump too late, you die. You die, you die, you die, you die, you die. Do you see how fast we're going? I have almost no time to react. This is bullshit! If they didn't put a game over bypassing checkpoint right before this section, I don't know what I'd do. The fact that I'm given unlimited immediate reruns is the only saving grace here, but otherwise, what in the hell were they thinking? Hey, let's spring this mode on you that requires faster than fast reflexes and a style of gameplay that has yet to be done once, mix it with instant death hazards every three steps, have a warning system that gives you at times less than a second to react, level design that would take clairvoyance to get through but otherwise is trial and error trap enemies that by their nature of the mode come in way too fast to react to, movement speed on the actual screen, like the actual display that Mega Man occupies to be slow as shit, giving you negative recovery time so if you need to fall back to see more of what's coming up, you can eat shit, mix it all together, and you have me having an aneurysm! Oh, and those input delays for jumping? Take a guess how prominent they are. If you answered worse than ever, you're absolutely right. It's the split-second nature of this mode. You can push the button right on the edge of a jump, and chances are because of the delayed jumps, it won't register and you'll die. This is constant, and so you need to press the jump button about a quarter second before you think you do, but then you might undershoot a jump and- ah! This is unfiltered agony, the game. This entire mode is the perfect storm of AIDS game design. Fuck this down our riverbed. There is nothing, nothing fun about it. 
Worst thing is, because it's separate from the whole Mega Man gameplay thing, there's nothing that can help you get through it, because there are optional items that make this game easier. Well, I say that, but these items are only optional in theory. As the game wore on, one thing became clear. Much of this game was based around me having all the best items. You see, the shop has returned from Mega Man 7, but where before it was entirely possible to get through without ever noticing the shop, because that's exactly what happened to me, the shop here is integrated into the game. All these big bolts, or whatever they are throughout the game, they're your currency, and not only are they very rare, but they're also very obnoxious to get. They take as much effort to get as an E-Tank from the previous games. Oh, you don't have to get them in theory, but this game is balanced so that you pretty much have to get the best items to do anything. Grinding the same levels over and over and over to get the currency to buy the best items to make this game go from broken to merely obnoxious. The game relies on you grinding. Does that sound like fun? No, and it's not like I was having such a rousing good time to begin with, so it's not like the game was incentivizing me to play more of it anyway. It's not giving me a cookie and promising me more cookies if I do a few laps around the field, it's following me with a flamethrower and telling me if you keep running laps, I won't light you on fire. There is no sense of accomplishment or fun I get from this game, so I'd rather pull my own teeth out with pliers than grind for currency, which evidently is the only way to do well at this game. After all that, after all the attrition, after all the frustration, after every facet of my being telling me to quit playing before I snap, I finally made it to Wily's castle. Only to subsequently face the absolute worst level in any Mega Man game, possibly any game I've ever played! And surprise surprise, it's another of the thing that made me almost hang it up earlier in the game. Yet another snowboarding level. Only the third, and I believe the final one of these. Yeah, they decided to arbitrarily add a new abortively bad game mode and only do it thrice. All the same flaws from before still apply, but much, much worse. You're given almost no time to react, and everything kills you, and on top of that, they decided to add smoke screens because this mode needed even less visibility, apparently. It's just split-second timing after split-second timing, all life or death. There is no way to know any of this. There is no way to predict what's coming up. You die, you die, you die. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Even when I do seemingly make it through, sometimes the controller just won't register my jumps. I, I, I pressed X! I pressed X! I'm trying to fall back so I have more time to react, but your actual movement speed on screen is slow as shit! Oh, and if you slide on this thing wrong, you'll fall off the edge because there's not enough space to fully slide. Oh my god. It's putting obstacles in my way and telling me, hey, fuck you, you can't pass this obstacle even though you did the thing I told you to do. You're fucked. There is no way to do this. It's just blatantly unfair trial and error bullshit for ages. Yeah. Mm! I give up. I give up. There's only so much a man can take, you know? There have been so few games that have ever outright defeated me, you know? I've beaten Secret Agent Clank three times. I've beaten Fighting Force 2. I like Enter the Dragonfly. But, but this? No, no, I'm done. I am so done. Between the terrible design dicking me around like a whore on prom night and just generally not being fun, I'm done. I'm tapping out. I'm giving up. I'm throwing in the towel. Fuck it. <sighs> I have a policy to never give up on games unless I'd rather be doing anything else. And Mega Man 8 has proven to be kryptonite for me. There is nothing, nothing fun about this game. I tried so hard to like it. And I got so far, but in the end, it broke me down. It stabbed me in an alleyway and pissed on my stab wounds. I don't care how it ends. Mega Man 8 could end with Bass revealing that he's secretly the reincarnation of Randy Rhodes and bust out a guitar for a rendition of Bark at the Moon, but I wouldn't care because Mega Man 8 is just not a good game. As awesome as that ending would be though, it would probably just be the same non-ending bullshit as always. I could take a rough stab at how it ends. You make your way through the stages of Wily's castle and you have a bunch of recycled enemies and set pieces from throughout the game with a few interesting bosses that actually have some neat gimmicks and thought behind them. Then you fight yet another recycled attrition rush followed by Dr. Wily having a two or three stage boss fight. The first part is some big machine and the second part is Wily in his capsule shooting things at you. And then you beat him and through some contrivance he gets away to fight yet another day because handcuffs are apparently alien technology in the world of Mega Man. Then those guys in the opening cutscene will probably do a thing. How close am I? Actually don't answer, I really don't care. I've heard that there are people these days who will go out of their way to defend this game, and I think it's completely indefensible. So the Mega Bullies are wrong, what a shock. I could go on for days about the broken design, frustrating controls, horrible bosses, atrocious balance, but I've said my piece on this game. I just think, overall, it's just a horribly unfun, horribly frustrating, 
Horrible, horrible, horrible game. Sometimes games are popularly hated unfairly, and sometimes games are popularly hated for good goddamn reason. This game gets an unprecedented rank of F. Don't be fooled by the stellar presentation. This game sucks. Apparently it's much better on a second playthrough, but <laughs> I couldn't even stomach the game long enough to get through one playthrough, so I don't care. If I never have to play this game again, it will be too fucking soon! Oh god. I'm gonna need like 12 of these before I can wash the fucking taste out of my mouth. God damn. Ugh. Oh, what's this? Mega Man and Base? <laughs> fucking Mega Man Fishing Simulator? <laughs> oh god, fuck that. This video was brought to you in part by my lovely patrons. I thank you for your continued support. If you want to become a patron for TGX, the link is in the description. Also, if you're wondering why the footage is in 30 FPS as opposed to my usual 60, well, I could say that I only recorded it in 30 because that's all it deserved, but the actual reason is, this is my first time recording a PS4 game with an intended 60 FPS, and I couldn't figure it out until after I'd already recorded all the footage, so it, that's just how things went. Yeah, this, there's no malice or anything behind it, it's just, I fucked up. What a surprise!